Thanks for staying with us. So today we're discussing the issue of being a stepfather or being a stepmother. Managing that situation is never an easy decision for any individual. Some have claimed that stepfathers find it easy to accept the child of their wife. But others have also said that many women find it difficult to accept the children of their husbands. Hmm. So the problem is some claim that fathers would accept fathers. and mothers would push away and start this whole competition with uh, their husband's child. So the question is, when you're faced with a situation where you have to deal with stepchildren, how do you confront it? Should you accept it? Should you have boundaries, rules? Or should you just totally... Um, reject it whole completely. What are your thoughts on being a stepfather or being a stepmother? That's our conversation this morning. You can call us on 081-270-53687. And um, you can also tweet to us at TVC and at this hashtag your view TVC so we can read your tweet. So many already already I come from this uh, polygamous family and this issue of stepfather, stepmother thing has always been an issue and people always wonder okay how do we live in harmony, especially when in situations in this story that we're looking at right now, where it's claiming that fathers usually would accept maybe the children from their wife or their maybe a former marriage, and they'll take them in as their child. But women find it difficult, on the other hand, to accept another, well, another woman's child in their own home. Mm. In fact, they become the wicked stepmother <sighs> to the child instead of um, embracing mm. that child. What do you think? How easy or how difficult is it for you to accept some of your sister? You know, so jump in. I want to jump in because I must disagree with this analysis. You see, the opportunities or the power tilts across genders. So, because you know, like we said yesterday, men are head of family and all of that. They, they take decisions from a certain point of view, while women take decisions from another point of view. So, a stepfather accepting a woman into his house. Is usually dealt with at the point of acceptance. If, for instance, he's marrying a woman who already has kids, he's accepting her from that point or he's saying no in, from his power point. He can say, ah, you can come in, but don't bring your kids. You can, and no, society would not judge him. But a stepmother who's, um, a woman who is marrying a man who already has kids, as she's coming in, they are judging her already. So she either pretends to be a good woman, comes in and strategizes either to become the wicked stepmother or find a way if she has a generosity in her heart to be a kind woman. Society doesn't always see them the same. And so because of that, they take their decisions from different areas of, and that's my um, experience that I have seen. So you're saying what that the woman is already prejudged before so she's she coming comes in the defense. So she, and the, part of her defense mechanism is, I accept, I, I totally... A, a man boldly, oh, oh, some women, let me tell you same. something. I know something from a family friend who had children from a previous marriage. She hid the children from her next marriage. I was surprised, I kept questioning. Her own child. Her own children, her own children. two of them, from her next marriage. And I kept questioning, why are you doing this? And she just kept wondering, why won't you understand? Men, all the men I have met, nobody wants to have that. They call my child a baggage. So she put the child on her mom and claimed she was a single girl right. to marry. And then that marriage too failed. So I sort of got away with telling her, I told you, just, you know, just right. be free. But when I looked at it, if it was a man, he puts the children in front of the woman, straight up. They don't have to hide their children, give to their mom and claim. They put their because child. They're in a position of power. You are in the, they're in a position of power. You either take me and my child or you deal with it. Mm. But when women are coming, they'll be like, ah. I've been trying because of this marriage thing. How mm. society sees That's women. That's an interesting angle that you're taking yeah, us to. That, I don't even think of it that way. Thinking, to, thinking I think, of I didn't think of it that way. Child. So the man does come in with that. Listen, I am I'm in charge. I have, I have my that. House. It's my also, house. Another way that I'm understanding you is that the man can do the basic minimum of acceptance. Mm -hmm. And the woman has to do the work the of nurturing. Yeah. Yeah. So, that so it's easier that to accept. Easy. Is so it as easy to do the everyday Be, nurturing yeah, and so raising of the child. So, so, so um, what, what I just noted down immediately we the topic was mm. um, a man's responsibility is usually financial. Mm -hmm. So the basis in, where a man will say, I'm not going to, is because he looks and says that, see, I, I cannot afford, I, mm -hmm. I, I want to marry you, I want to raise, what, we'll have two children, I cannot afford to raise your, your other two. It's financial. Straight. 
in most cases, they are looking at bottom line, my pocket. But for a woman, it's not about finance. It's about the emotional attachment. And the truth is, for women, even dealing with our own children can be an emotional strain based on the child's personality. And when you now put that woman to deal with someone who, a child who they have no emotional attachment to, you know, not like, you know, my biological sure, child, yeah. and then you are acting out, you know, those teenage years or they're doing something unusual, it's a huge burden to expect that woman to, some mothers actually, they cry, they beat, they do everything, they are almost rejecting their own biological child, but nobody will complain. Mm -hmm. But if they do the same reaction to a stepchild, they say she's been a wicked yes. stepmother. Give but she's just trying to cope okay. with the emotional burden of raising right. the children. Yes. Most of the time, the men are not put on, under pressure to be emotionally available. Mm -hmm. But women have to be emotionally available. You have mm -hmm. to be there. And mm -hmm. so when you're unable to fulfill that, you are turned into a wicked stepmother. Yes. That for me is that let me, issue. Let me, let me put this in two different, because I don't want us to mix it up. Mm -hmm. There's the situation whereby the woman has children, and mm -hmm. she's coming into her marriage with the children. Mm -hmm. That's one situation. Mm -hmm. There's a situation whereby she's you are there. single, and you're coming into a marriage where there's like, their children already yes. there. Mm -hmm. So it's you accepting this. The, how you manage those children is always an issue. Are you going to be seen as a wicked stepmother coming in? Or is if you have your own children, will the man accept? So you're saying that the man okay. immediately would accept you and the child because you can provide. If you can provide, if you can provide, if you can provide from day one, you just say no. No, no, so it's that. So as, just I... as Mayan put it, it's about um, provision. Yeah. So for a man, okay, I accept you, I give you shelter. That's, that's, that's the basics that he has to do. So if he's accepting your children, it's still you who not just, still you who does, you know. So for a man who puts it in perspective, no problem. But when you are going into a man's home, it's beyond provision. You have to learn to nurture. You know, it takes time to learn to love. People don't learn accept to it. Learn to nurture. The learn new children that don't belong that to you. That don't belong to you. Right. Even the one you born. It takes a while. That's the 14 days waiting period for you to get into yeah. understanding that new situation. But nobody gives a woman as a stepmother that room. Mm. Everything she does. Is, if, in fact, we are going far. If a woman was to receive in-laws visiting, nobody asks her whether she's predisposed to receiving them, she's in the mood or anything. We are coming over. Yeah. That's it. But if the man doesn't want them, ah, my husband does not want you, people would understand. But if yeah. a woman dares to yeah. say, I cannot receive you at this time, mm. and they are from the other yeah. side, they will say, they hey, you, do you have mm. two necks or yeah. one neck or two heads? Yeah. So the way society sees it is yeah. always not yeah. good yeah. on the side of the... In fact, it's not I'm fair on the side of, of, yeah. the, of the So women. when you're looking at it that way, just like, um, you know, without... Um, going deep into it, mm -hmm. it just looks like it's easier to be a stepfather or stepfathers Much find easier. it um, easier to accept children than mm -hmm. um, stepmothers. But if we were to dig further, I just think it's not really about mothers or fathers or stepfathers or stepmothers. Mm -hmm. It's really about individuals. Mm -hmm. There are some people who would open up, there are some fathers who would open up their hearts and their minds beyond financial contributions and will help to raise a child. And we've seen videos of children who have, you know, um, in their adulthood, you know, in respect to their stepfathers, yeah. what they have done for them, and they are so grateful for them. I have seen also um, stories where adults are thanking the stepmother because you came into our lives, you know, thank you for all that you did for us, that you helped us. Nobody would have been able to tell the difference between us and your children because of the way you opened yourself up to us. There are two different, there are different kinds of people, and there are some people who are kinder, I guess, and more and easy and it's easier for them. Money also plays a major role. The more money you have, sometimes the easier it is yeah. to, for a lot of things not to be a problem. Mm. So if you have to decide who has to be, whose school fees has to be paid first, that can be a tough decision for a mother. And if it's the mother maybe bringing in the resources and she has her biological children and the stepchildren. I bring this up because uh, recently I read a story online, a girl who was saying that, see, uh, my stepmother, she has her own children, um, but she's the breadwinner of the house. My dad doesn't have any uh, mm. money. And now we're about to go into university or so. Her younger brother, who is a half-brother, his mom is able to pay for his fees, but she cannot go because the mother wants to pay for her own child first, first before her. And, you know, the response is, that's a wicked stepmother. Why would she not send you first? After all, you're older than her own child. But there are people who say, but... Is it not um, survivor, really, that you want to protect your own child first? You pay for your mm -hmm. own child. That's, That's the one that... Enough. So where do you place that woman? Is she a wicked oh. woman or is she a woman that... And then if she pays for the stepchild, is it a woman that is not looking 
to because raise our own child. You, 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 so, you can pay for the, your stepchild yes, to go to school. Yeah. And at time after when it's time for you to have your own child to go to school, you, you don't have, have you don't have the resources anymore. Yeah. Wow. So, wow. It's so it's really a tough situation. There are yeah. some people who are willing to make the sacrifice and say, okay, everybody stay at home. But if you look at it as human beings, when mm. the push comes to shove, what would we do? Yes. So, yeah. so uh, we got a break. Okay. We'll come back. We'll dig further yeah. into this. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Thanks for staying with us. We're still discussing the issue of stepfather, stepmother, stepchildren, how to accept um, a situation where you have to deal with stepchildren. And um, Marianne brought an important angle, shared resources, especially when it's driven by a woman is making a lot of money and you're having to choose between managing the resources between your own biological children and your stepchild. Um, and that, that's, that, that's what many people are faced with. Not that they don't love the children, just thinking to myself, ah, this is my own child, what do I do? Mm -hmm. the, the, many people are faced because society judges you, doesn't give you that chance to, as you said, nurture naturally. Let it come from, from inside. Okay. They want you to enter the house, mm -hmm. immediately and fall in love. And fall in love and be accepted and just, and just have a 360 love for this person. Knowing that even in real life, you grow, love grows over time. So um, I, I'm, I'm in the space where I feel that many mothers, as, I, I, as a child growing up, I hear many times when people say, like, I'm not even sure my mother is my mother. She's so harsh. Mm. She was so, like, the way she was beaten, all of those things. Mothers do some things mm. to break their children away from the jaws of the world, from falling into bad habits, from going into crime. They resort to, they resort to a lot of things that, if done by a stepmom, with the same intention of, I don't want you to go into crime. I see you standing with some people that are using drugs. I pull you into the house. Mm. I beat you. That same scenario, if played as a mother, is seen as disciplinarian. Mm -hmm. But if played by a stepmother, mm -hmm. is seen as wicked. wicked stepmother. I'm not saying that there are no wicked stepmothers. There are people that are actually evil to their stepchild mm. who would dish food and give their own child double Portion and give their the one that is not theirs biologically less food. Yeah. They are weak, yeah. that's wickedness. Well, but in majority yeah. of the cases, we are labeling wrongly because we are judging the woman yeah. based on the fact that she is not the biological yeah, mother of the child. And that, and that is I have majority. Known, oh, I'd like to go back a bit to what Miriam says because I've, I know a lot of stepmother stories mm. that stepmothers are invested <laughs> in children that don't belong to them, but maybe they're, they're, they're not their own biological children. Mm. And in future, they regretted it, yeah. or it, 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 was, it fell flat on their faces that all, the, all my investments in this person. Yeah. So you, you are, because you love your husband, yeah. you say, okay, you know what, your child, I'll send the child to school, mm -hmm. I'll do this, I'll do that. And then the child grows up and ignores totally you. ignores you and doesn't even, totally just moves on. Like, listen, you know, the, the, you know or goes back to their own biological mind, which is, which is, which is fine. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't acknowledge mm. the your, sacrifices your sacrifice. you've made in their life. These are things that yeah, happen. Yeah, these are things that happen. It also happens with adoptive parents, parents that adopt children. And the children are able to yes. find their parents. You know, I see that. I think that's a good example of how you give your all to a child that's not biologically yours. And then the child grows up and insists on looking for their parents and leaves. But, um, you know, everyone always says that when you're doing good, you do it without thinking of what you will get in return. Mm -hmm. And many times that you have done good a certain way, don't expect that it will come back exactly that way for you. So that can be, uh, that can be, that can give you a sense of, you know, hope, you yeah. know, that what I'm doing, you, so you do what you have to do and then just hope for the best that God is watching you and watching your own side. But it can be painful. Mm -hmm. It can be painful when, if, Especially when it comes, you see this education thing, that's the one I see a lot of. Mm. You're able to send one child to a private school or the other one to a public school because, and, it's not, and you can see the difference in their lives because of an educational mm. choice that you made. And your child had to take that sacrifice. You know, you had to make that sacrifice with, using mm. your, own, your own biological child. And in the future, there's no relationship between these stepchildren, between these half-siblings. And you're saying, how, why, why then did I give my all to this child if somehow it would not mean that yeah. the, my, it will, he will help my child you know going um, okay. in future so many mothers or stepmothers listening to this story haven't heard these stories are taking different positions or you know mm -hmm. doing it differently now but it does not make 
but the question will be now, does that make that person a wicked, wicked woman or just a smarter woman mm. or just, you know, the way of the way, a realistic mm. woman? Preservation. I have seen, there, there, I, I will talk about my, my grandma. Everybody would describe her as a selfless woman. She would give her everything and her all. And at the time that she was alive, it did not look like it was, you know, it paid off. But mm. her own children and her own grandchildren, I mean, wherever she is in heaven looking She's down, she God. will be grateful because yeah. it's not really about how much money she had put down anything. Just that God helped in a way, you know, gave them grace, you know, mm. and they're able to succeed wherever they are. So There are really no guarantees. I've seen mothers who raise their own kids and their kids turn their backs. True. So that there means. in life, <laughs> that's so whatever true. you are doing, that just is, do. That is so right. I know someone who keeps saying that is my stepbrother who established my business. Oh, She's yes. a millionaire today. She kept saying there's a good in polygamy. There's good. My stepbrother, that you will never know the difference. These are my stepbrothers. And I was the child of a younger wife. And they made a difference. So she continues to carry family like that. She's constantly talking to me. She's mentoring me. So I know that in life you do what you need to do. Sometimes when you make those sacrifices of a, ch not, not even a child, let's, let's say a, a relative, distant or close, nephew or maybe one extended family relative with your child, when the children are at home, like a school, for instance, you can afford a particular, you prefer a particular kind of elite school for your child and it's expensive, but you cannot afford two kids there at a time. And you decide, okay, let my child go to this school with this other child. It's important to share mm. that decision making with both with children. children. I've seen where my, in my own parents' home, it was dangerous at the time because they were not sharing how tough these decisions were for the relative that lived with us. Mm. And so when he grew up, he became rebellious at some point, thinking, mm. hey, they are choosing between me. And I remember how hurtful that thing was to mm. my mom and my dad. They would be like, ah, why are these people like this? You know, this was, these were the things that we had to do. So we, we, I saw their perspective because they shared. If mm. they continued to keep quiet, I said to them, I'm sure he doesn't know yes. most of these things. Mm. He took him leaving going far away from the house, testing other girls and saying, I did better mm. with these people yeah. and coming back in appreciation. If he never got that opportunity, yeah. he would never. That's so I believe thing. in the talk to that person, yeah. talk to this child, not, not, um, not in a negative way. I don't know how to use but the word. It, but in reality, but, that, but this not, is not in like, an incitive way. Yeah. But you talk to the child and say, okay, I have school A and B. This is what I would have preferred for both of you. So that child knows... I would prefer for if the child knows that you're not their director. But I can't afford for both of you. For what both you? of you, but I can't afford it for both of you. Okay. I can afford it for one. Yeah. And I don't want to choose between both of you because I love both of you okay. equally. You so now both of you are now going to a school lesser. This is not for your child to grow any grievance. This is for the other child to know that in terms so of choices, your own child, you, you now step you back. Sacrifice, you sacrifice yes. your own child. Child's the education. quality you want for your child, for both of because, them to have the same that's level. That's a tough choice for any But you mother. need to have that conversation so that you don't fetch water inside basket. Hey, but hey, it's, it's tough to have because you think to yourself, I'm going, I'm going to take care of you, but hmm. you're working hard. The reason why you work hard is so that your children, at the end of the day, it's oh, for you to handle your, your job no. that for your children. Oh, now your so children. So when, Once they are when you don't have to time. choose and say, listen, I'm going to have to sacrifice taking my child to this school just because I don't want this person to feel bad, that's a tough decision for a woman it's to make. Let me take this call and I'll come to you. Good morning, are you there? Kenny, you're there. You're live. Yeah, good morning. Please uh, go ahead. Thanks for calling. Uh, my mom got to talk to this mother is out there. So mom got to talk to this. He's a very good brother. Yeah. He's a bit issue. muffled. He's a very good brother. Whereby, when you marry the woman that has to talk to you, when you came out, when you came into your house, I just got to speak. Can't hear him. <laughs> Kenny, I can't you know, hear you. Uh, okay. Hello. Yes, you read close. Go ahead. I don't know. When you came back to your house, you are you are already a man that you are not happy. 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 We can't hear you, Kenny. I'm so sorry. I really, I really wanted to hear you. I'm so sorry. Is that like you're too close to the, to the phone? I couldn't hear you. It's too muffled. So um, here is my personal experience, because I know you always, it sound there's ideal and there's reality. As a, December 2020, I brought a young lady whose mom told me she needed, I cannot raise this child anymore. So I brought her from Ogumosho to the house, and my husband and I discussed, we want to raise her, we want to put her in school. And 
based on accounts, I cannot, she can't live in my house and not go to my children's school. Mm. So I had to make the sacrifice of putting her in my parents' house where we could get a, an affordable school that was still good. So she's staying in my parents' house and they are raising her. But if she's in my house, she has to eat what we are eating. She has to go to the school my children are going to. We will have to make that sacrifice because you're not doing... It, I, I've said it, don't invest in your children because you want to reap from them. Mm. You invest in your children because it is your responsibility to do. If you now have five children, three biologically, two not biologically, you will invest in all of them because you decided to mm. take that responsibility. Mm. If you cannot take it, then don't accept those children in the first place. So it must be that decision of, I cannot. I, I was advising a woman about adoption and she said, I know myself, I cannot love these people mm. if I adopt. I'd rather mm. wait until God gives me my own child. Mm. So she was like, I know. I have tried raising other people's children and when they start crying, I go crazy. So <laughs> if you know yourself that you cannot give that selflessly and every parent must go through that journey, it is when we start thinking, okay, this one is my own child. This, this one will go to private school. This one that is not you my child I... will go to public school. It, it, it is wrong. calculative decision making. You might need making. to step down for everybody because yes. at the end of the day, one Nima said was, I was going to make that point that your child can abandon you. Yes, there are no guarantees. Mm. And in life, it is the good no that no you sow. And which is what my Her grandfather, her grandmother, my mother might seem like, okay, this didn't, yes. it, might, it might look that way. Mm. But they are grace that my name is benefiting that she knows it's not, yeah. she didn't earn fantastic. it. Yeah. God just give, giving her that oh, grace. Oh, fantastic. I love that. I love that. that Thank you. Let me take this one for Michael. That's, that's a whole, that, that's wisdom right there. Mm -hmm. Because you're saying that even if you don't, even, if your child could work against you at the end of the day. Yes. So, yes. there are no guarantees. So, just sit down and sit down. This one, this one is a yeah. select let me take this child. Mm. This one let is not. Let me take this, this, this call from Michael. Thing. Michael, are you there? Yes. You're live. Go ahead, please. Yeah, good morning. Morning. Yeah, I'm the first caller. Welcome, Welcome to, to the show. show. Thank you so much. Yeah, here yeah, is your topic for today. I really love this call. I'm not a victim of that. Not a victim of that. But, you know, my dad married a woman. You know, she also has children from under where she was coming from. And also to this, I give it to this woman because she raised me from my childhood. To the extent that you cannot easily distinguish between our children and my siblings, other siblings. And also to this, that. I've seen my own biological mother maybe like two, three years, but I go to her every day, every time to make sure that, to appreciate what she has done for me. So it's a two thing. And at the end of the day, even myself now, my wife has a child from where she was calling from, you know, and as a single person, I got her, I married her, I loved her with the child. And not to be, the child she called me is that. Thank you, Michael. Thank, thank, you thank you for sharing. I mean, that's an interesting oh, story. Let me take, let me go on a quick break. When we come back, we'll take a few more tweets. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So before, we're talking about the roles of stepmother, stepfathers, and then we moved into the legacy roles or mm -hmm. the, the legacy of, the, of this experience because somebody was talking about the fact that his mother who was a stepmother, raised him. Yes. Just exactly as she raised her own children. So, and they were talking about what happens, the fallback of these, of these, um, mm -hmm. these things we do as a, as a stepmother, stepfather. Let's take a few comments and we'll move okay, further. So, Olusegun Olie says, see this, see uh, this stepmother thing favor me. When I was in primary mm. school, I wasn't doing well academically. And my mom will always call me different failure names. Mm. But my stepmom will always tell me I am better. I can't be a dullard and all. I grew up to love my stepmom more, uh, more. Hmm. and just with the last caller's um, talk, you see that kind seed sowed. He paid it forward. If somebody sows a seed of kindness in the heart of a child, and that child grows up balanced, you've done the world a lot of good. Hmm. The one that I cannot understand is that calculative choice making. So, five kids are with you, three are yours, two are not yours. You now be doing when it comes to food sharing. School choices, you be saying, well, these are the really real ones. These ones, they are nobody's child. Anything they see, they survive. It's a tough choice, but it must be it's, done. You see that? You see, uh, it's tough, but that's where you should check yourself. Because we are human. It, has, it, has, it will come. That thought will come to your mind. But that's exactly when you should check yourself. In life, from experiences, 
they turn out, they, they, they end up worse. They end up bad. You might be raising that choice making thing and thinking, I bet these ones, they should be done better by. But you're raising entitled kids who think just because of their birth and their mm. circumstance, their life must be, and they will not understand how to work. You see some kids who say, my stepmother was tough, she was wicked to me, but she made me who I am, I am today. today. Yeah. Because yeah. they learn early how to be resilient and make better choices. Mm. So sometimes you're not doing anybody any help. Pour them together. They might just end up being my grandfather, uh, grandfather's children. You, if we, if the, the mothers don't bring their rivalry in between, you cannot tell the difference. They are their father's children. Simple. You know, there's a family, there's a big family in Lagos. I'll tell you their own story. Let me take this call first. Tayo, are you there? Yes, I am. Good You're morning. live. Go ahead, please. Okay. Um, I, I, I am, I'm not from a polygamous home, so to speak. My mom... Hello, can you hear me? Very clearly. Okay. Um, my, my, my parents were divorced quite early, so my father got married to um, another woman. It was quite early. And I can say that she is well, my father has divorced from her, you know, for a while, but um, she's one of the best women. Um, when, when, um, when I, my children and I went to, uh, for my sister's, for my stepsister's uh, graduation, and we stayed in her place, you know, so she's, I can say that I enjoyed um, her, her uh, my relationship with her. So, um, I think um, all other um, all other relationships, you know, people that say that um, they have terrible stepmothers. I think mine was almost um, superb. Thank I mean, you very really, much, Sarah, I still for enjoy sharing. a good relationship. So you just her. think to yourself, what 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 was the fear women or fathers of have? You know, what's what's that fear you have in raising somebody else's child? You know, somebody was uh, giving me a story. I know, I know a story of a big family in Vegas. I wouldn't mention their name. And the father was very deliberate on how this, this was a polygamous family. And I think I've shared the story before. So the wives, they have about four, five, six wives, a lot of wives. But he ensured that every ch the ch children went to the same schools. Even the, he had nephews, um, nieces, all, they all went. He chartered a bus. He had money. Mm. He chartered a bus to pick them up in the morning to take them to school. Mm -hmm. the, the same, they all had the same lesson teachers. Mm -hmm. Like, it was so equal that they all grew up until today. They are, they are bonded. Yeah. They are together because they never saw their mother's, oh, their mother's involvement in their upkeep. Mm -hmm. It was all their father. So mm -hmm. they were like children from the same source. Mm -hmm. So it goes back to what you said. So these children, not all of them were biological. They're all cousins, and they all yeah. but they all grew up together. And today, they are one family. They are mm -hmm. one bond. So I get that. But when it comes to reality sometimes, when there are limited resources, mm. where it's like even the man in question is not pulling his weight, and you are the one doing all the work, mm. and I think it's yourself. This work that I'm doing, how do I now share? This is my small work that I'm doing, mm. and use it to raise your own child. You that you can tomorrow leave me alone. Mm. The man can walk away from this marriage tomorrow. Mm -hmm. He can say he's divorcing me today and marry somebody else. Yeah. I'm not going to use my resources to raise his child. Mm. These are questions a woman has in her head. Yeah. And why would I raise somebody else's child? Yeah, so I'm, I'm not, I won't generalize, but I'll just, I'm saying this based on what I've noticed. In the North, especially with the Hausa Muslims, I tend to see polygamy to have, um, I'm not saying it's true for every family, but um, the father is the father and he provides for everyone. And so the children are all treated equally. You go to the same schools, you get the same things. Your mothers are also treated equally. I see that quite often. I'm not saying that's the truth for everyone. Mm -hmm. But one thing I also noticed from being here in Lagos is the mothers, the, uh, the polygamy is more like they are different cell units. Mm -hmm. And the mother is the head of every cell. cell, you know. And so every, the child, in, the children in this family could be different. Because if this woman does more, if she earns more, her children may go to better schools than their half-siblings yeah, who yeah, are. Yeah. And I feel that in that case, it, it would, there's, there will be resentment. Yeah. Because I hear stories from the north, like, this is my brother, my sister. That's all they know. They never even talk about their mothers like they are different. Yeah. Because everything about their lives has always been this way. Yeah. But I've seen here on this side of Nigeria where when they become older, they don't even talk to each other. Mm. I mean, they were raised in the same home, but yes, exactly. they are different. So they don't even talk to each other. They are no longer brothers. Or you see your brother in public and you cannot even say anything to him because you can see that difference yeah, in how they absolutely. were raised. Let me take this couple of Antonia. Antonia, are you there? Mm. 
Tommy yeah. Solo, you're live. Go ahead, please. Thank my caller. Welcome to the show. I enjoy your show. Your show. Thank you. And Nima, I love you. You are so realistic. <laughs> Thank you for always being yourself. Thank you. All right. My own contribution is that my I lost my daddy very early when I was seven. So my mommy has to remarry. He married a man that is also a divorcee. That he, he lost her own wife. Along the line, my mommy took those children, like, if people want to buy Christmas clothes, she will buy first and ask the other girl to choose before me. But when they grow up, they change automatically. That day, I made up my mind that I will never marry anybody that has children. It's better for me to marry somebody that is managing. I have two sons that have children uh, before they are married, but I rejected them because I, I saw the hatred of those children render upon my mommy, upon all the love she showered upon them. So I made, it's better for you to come and meet me. Then I'll go and meet you because if you go and meet me, I know you are the one looking for my trouble. But I will not go and meet you if you are you have everything. I will not marry somebody there. Antonia, children. Antonia. Ma. So from the meet, from the conversation we've been having since the beginning of this show, we I, I hear and understand that perspective, and I think we've learned so far that when you sow a seed, which your mother has done, she reaps that seed in different ways. So it's not so much from the people who she raised to actually do good to her or pay her back. No, she will reap that good work she has done in so many multiple different ways. So don't use that as, oh, how they treated your mother. No, 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 no. Put that aside because she will definitely reap the benefits of what she has done some other way. So I think that's the lesson I'd like you to take away from here. So don't, okay. don't say you wouldn't want to marry somebody else. No, things happen differently. differently. So I, I want us to take that learning from, knows, from this experience. But it's good that she's you know, able to yeah. state. So a person who is coming into her life knows what her background is like and appreciates this that, you know, who? she's putting it out there. What I hate is that you put it out there and they are judging. Nobody understands. If I, if I, if I cannot take a, if I, can, if I think at, at, I'm, a point, at a point, I'm at a point in my life, I can't love or I can't give what is expected of me. I should be able to state it. Mm. Rather than fail at it and then be judged at, uh, as failing at it. Mm. This thing requires <laughs> investment of emotions, plenty yes. of it. And Emotional if you think maturity. you are not qualified at that time, I beg stay it too. Mm. Because you cannot come and bring an, a child that is dependent on you, the, who, who feel the consequence of that thing, mm. and damage that person into mm. adulthood. You know, stepchildren come into our lives in different ways. There are some people you marry into a family, you marry a man who already has children, you marry a woman who already has children. But we have seen stepchildren that come in... You marry a man, and then from extramarital affairs, he has children. So children. this is this <laughs> is a man. This is a marriage you already said. Okay, I will not marry any person yeah. with children, and you found yourself in this marriage, and now there are children. What what? So is this a deal for Antonia? Would that be a deal breaker for her? Mm. Would this mean the end of that marriage mm. completely because she cannot deal with these extra children that have come in from I, I another? Let me wrap up on this. Let me wrap up on this because we have to take another story. How? Does a woman or a man develop that 360 love immediately? So you can come into a home. Because I'm, 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 I want us to discuss it before we wrap up. So you come into a home where there's a child already, or you're bringing in a child. How do you expect your husband to automatically love and hmm. raise this child immediately that you're bringing in immediately, start calling you daddy, start hmm. saying, you know, daddy, I love you, that kind of thing. Or you coming into a man's house who has children, and automatically it's they're calling you mommy, and they have... How does that happen? Should society begin to re restate or reevaluate re re the expectation of a woman or a man in that situation? Shouldn't we ex should we expect immediate love, mm -hmm. or should we give them time? I, I think and how much already, time are we, do we think we can you, give them? You already answered the question in that there must be time, and mm -hmm. I think it's wrong for you to just expect that it's going to be magical. Mm -hmm. I also feel that um, you cannot give what, what you don't have. Many people don't love themselves, they are struggling with self-love. They are struggling mm. with self-acceptance. And you now expect them to just see somebody and then love that person. Mm, it won't just you. flow. Yeah. We are all on a journey of healing yeah. and learning. And the more we learn and heal, the more we are able to accept and love. Mm. But if we deny that part of our journey, then we are unable to give. And we should. We, I think that the society needs to be less judgmental yeah. of women going through that struggle or men going through that struggle of accepting another person and understand that he's not a bad person. Just just know how to love this is bonus child mm. well yet. Mm -hmm. And bonus then we now, go like on a, yes, we now go on a journey of teaching them to love and accept that person. But what we tend to do is just judge and say, you're a wicked person. You're such a wicked... And all the family will gather and say, she's wicked. She's wicked. Mm -mm. Let's not label. Mm. Let us 
um, identify the challenge and then we work our way towards helping them love and accept mm. this new I, I personally child. can also tell you that it takes a while. I have a stepfather. Mm. And I met my stepfather when I was, you know, maybe about 10 or 11. So I knew who my father, I knew this is my stepfather. Mm. And it's a journey. And just things that happen, you know, um, over time would mm. help de you develop a relationship. As long as the person is really intentional about building a relationship with mm. you and the person is honest mm. in their relationship with you, it will, you will find a mm. common ground. Mm. Even if it's not the best of relationship that you're mm. in love with each other, you will come to respect each yeah. other. First of all, it's determined, sorry, can I go, go on? I have a long distance call, but okay. I wanted to pause you for a second. From Equatorial Guinea, Whoa. Um, Joshua, are you there? <laughs> Hello, Mariah. You're alive. Go yeah. ahead, please. <laughs> so then you guys don't know, you just like to get a, 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 a visit to America. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> okay. Thanks for calling. Go ahead, so please. I, I'm really enjoying you guys' conversation, eh? Mima? Huh? Mima? We, we <laughs> always love you, Mima, because you are saying the truth. Because yeah. we have to be a little economy. And then we like to see what you see in the state of Nigeria. Now, in terms of this issue of uh, state mother and state father, mother, state father always try their best to make sure that they know both their own children and the children of their women because of the law that they have for the woman. But the woman part is not only that way, because they, they are like them. They protect their own and take the way. Other hands, other, other. Joshua? Because I have an experience, not, that, not uh, from me, but from a neighbor. I know a man that had a woman before and had two children. The woman died, but the second wife rejected him so tiny. Or today, what you see to him, the, the children that she rejected are the ones providing for her. Because they, they have the need. And her own children that she loves so much that she rejected, not even to give them a meal to a day. Mm. They are not ready to be found. They are not doing anything. Mm. They will stay up in city outside without calling or coming up to see her. Mm. So the conversation is always easier said than done. Thank you, Joshua. Mm -hmm. Just like what you said, it's not your, your, your own biological no, child, but still obvious. Yeah. Yeah. No guarantees in this life. Yeah. So, so I was saying, say something. Yeah, yes, so yeah. I was just saying how you know these relationships develop. So it's important how the children will look at how you're treating their the person that if it's their mother or you know if it's the father. The relationship between you. Are you, is the person happy? Do you truly love this person? That's a great determinant. I remember when uh, my stepfather came into our lives, he used to come and pick us from school and take us to lunch in this really nice Massa place. I'll never forget, it was Plateau Hospital there. There used to be a Massa woman. He would take us there first. We that usually would be in school. Before he came, we'll be in school. We were usually the last to be picked from school because maybe my mom has gone to work and auntie has forgotten to pick us. There's always clashing of time. Nobody yeah. knows when there's... So we'll be the last in school. But when he came into our lives, first, we'll come out of the gate and he's there packed waiting to pick us. And from there, we'll go straight, have massa before we get home. It was, you know... From, yeah, it was, it was great. You know, that was his own way. And then we developed a relationship. I've told you of a time when I went to the market to buy something yes, yes, and he, yes. you came and he fought, which was, was so new yeah. to me, you know. So you have to be deliberate about building a relationship That's because right. you have to come into that relationship with an open mind. I'm here, I know that these children are here and I want to love them. And I've seen how these relationships can also break down. No matter how you say you love the children, if you're treating the mother or you're treating the father wrong, that relationship will not grow. Mm -hmm. The person, the reason they know you is because of this person, and yet you're mm -hmm. not treating that person mm -hmm. right. So. Let me come to you in a second, Nima. I have Prince Abiodun holding from Port Harcourt. Good morning, Prince Abiodun. Good morning. Go ahead, sir. Yes, I'm the one press for last year. Welcome to the show. Oh. Okay, I just want to contribute to what yes, you are saying right now. Yes, sir. Um, I'm a rich from my father, and my father based in Lagos, and when he wanted to travel back to the state, my mother refused to go with him. And my father married another wife when he gets to the state. And this woman treats us very bad. We are two, me and my brother, and he came with another child to my father's house. And he treats 
the one he came with. My father now supports his new wife because of we are living together. And today, my father is late. The woman is still alive. The only thing the relationship between both of us is not for there because the way it is us where we are with her. What I want to just people to learn, when you treat your, either your step your stepson or your stepdaughter, you will still reap and gain in the future. I want everybody to learn from this third story. It happened to me. When my stepfather mother, I would say that I want this food. He said, no, this food is for his own that And I remember that the day I wanted to eat, and he said that this soup is belong to his own eagle, that he cannot give it to me. And I went to go and take that soup. And then my father came back and reported to my father. My father poured the soup on me. I cannot, my father said, apologize after some time. The only thing I'm, as you people are discussing this program, I still remember what this woman did to me. What I'm trying to say, when you have such a children, treat them equally, you don't know tomorrow. Yeah. What the woman did to us, she made two of the children, this woman, she did and us. We didn't have good relationship, but I'm talking to you. I'm not that yes. Now, the only thing, the way you treat us, the woman is still alive, my father is late. The only thing we don't have that friend between both the children and I. We didn't right. have good relationship together. Thank you very much, Mr. Biodo. Let me, let so, me, yeah. This is it. So I wanted to build on what we Let me go on a break. Okay. Okay. When I come back, I'll come back to you, Nima. Stay okay. with us. We'll be right back. Thanks for staying with us. We're still discussing polygamy. Not so much polygamy, actually. More of stepfather role mm. and stepmother role. Let's take a few comments on social okay. media. Yes. So, um, hey, Lisa says, I don't have any issues taking care of someone's child. Like mm. Topper said, we should invest in taking care of children because we, because we want to reap them only. Oh, we shouldn't invest in taking care of children because we want to reap them only. We should take care of good care of them because we decide to take such responsibility. And he said, "May God, God help us." Mm -hmm. When this caller that called last was talking, I he sort of buttressed what I wanted to say when Miriam was also talking about that deliberate relationship towards it. As a stepmom or father, the least person that would understand you is the child who's mm -hmm. just watching, seeing the actions you're taking. Mm -hmm. So the people, the key family members, the opinion makers, the people around are the ones who I would like to say, you should know better. You should understand how tough it is and give a growing period. That period... Oh, family when, members who come in or what? Family members who witness. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes your, Aunties, your, your, your mother's sisters who can visit, who you keep contact with, mm -hmm. they would do one who say, ah, the father's wife, ah, did she give it to me? How many? Yeah, you know, they're yes. the ones, oh, they're yeah. the ones who not, this <laughs> 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 they're the one, So there's something one of my aunties did that I learned from her. Mm -hmm. She had to take in a family member into her house, a young girl, and then she would send the girl on her answer. When, every time her mother-in-law would visit, this her mother-in-law didn't take the girl, but she would visit and rate how the girl is being cared for. Eh, hey, 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 I shall, ah, this dress you wore for her, it looks tattered. She didn't buy it. Ah, today, the black dress looks faded. Ah, why is she the one going to buy you something? The woman just called her that day. The last time, she said, what this, Mama, you have visited four times already, the girl is with me. Do you mind taking her home? She said, ah, what, what are you, what do you mean? She said, Mama, allow me to raise this girl. If you do, I cannot raise this girl without you judging. Take her home today. And she made a scene. Then, as a young girl, I quickly put it in my left hand. What I can't deal, what I will be judged by, I will not accept. Mm. If the person will stay in my house and be a proper adult. Mm. I had my nephew visit and he told me, I don't do chores in my house. I said, okay, my house, my kids do chores. The problem with you not doing it here, because really, there are no chores that I want to give you, but the problem with you not doing it is that my exactly. kids will then have an alternative of whether they should do it or not. So mm. in this house, while you're holidaying here, you'll be doing chores. Mm. I did not call the experience to say anything. Mm. By the time he went back home, I called his parents. Did you see any difference? He said, ah, now he asked, in case they are asking. Because, you know, people yeah. would want to ask. Let me take this call from Give Mrs. Williams. to mm. love, to grow that love. Good yeah. morning, madam. Are you there? Oh, good morning. You're live. Go ahead, please. Good morning. Mm. Nice to be here. Thanks. I've always been trying to call you. Thank you. Thank yes. you. Yes, Mariah, you are doing a marvelous job. Thank you, madam. Yes. Yes, I have this very bitter experience with my stepmom. Mm. 
my parents and we we used to stay in Ikoni, but when she came in, when she came in, my 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 parents they separated. My father was only telling her, I just separated with my wife. We are not divorced. But she came in, had an affair, and got pregnant. Anyway, when she came in, she stopped us from eating on the dining room, saying we are, we are getting the dining table. She asked us to go and eat in the kitchen. She would put five of us. My, chick, my mother had five children. She would put all our food inside one place. I used to have a three-year-old sister. I will put her own separate food so she, after we have washed the food, she can have something else to eat. Then she will ask us to stop having a bath upstairs in the bathroom, the family bathroom. She asked us to go to the bus stop to have a bath. You know, no food. When I grew up, my father used to be a civil servant. I knew him with three cars. My mother trained my father abroad. But when they came to Nigeria, you know, fine boys. You know, everything went in wire. You know, I met him with three cars. My father's telephone number was on the directory, Lagos State directory, or even federal. We had three cars. She said we should not, we, the driver should not take us to school again. I used to go to primary school in Mekwe Road in Kuyi. We were living on our lower road. Mm -hmm. She stopped us from entering the car. We would check to school. In the afternoon, we would check back. As soon as we are reaching the corner of our house, we will see her, I will see the driver carrying her and, her and my stepbrother out. We are going out to. She did a lot of things for us. Later, my, my other siblings, they found a way to, to my mother's house, but I was the timid one, I think. I will cry every day. He's always crying. He's always beating. He's always hunger. My father would abuse me in her presence, then would turn around to my window and start begging me. Please, you see, all the others are first. We are the only one left. So it was really a tough time with this woman. We really had a lot of tough times. I was supposed to do love, but I may not. Ms. Williams, have you, have you been able to reconcile with her? Now, fast forward to today. What's have both of you been able to... Do you have a good relationship with her today? Or the child? My father died in 2001. Since that day, I have not set my eyes on her or the children. I don't want to see them. Wow. They want to show you weak. That's it. Thank you for sharing your story. So, um, you know, when we have conversations like this, it's to drive lessons, you know, help people change their mind concerning how they see things. Maybe people more open to, I find myself in this situation, I'm going to love. At least I've heard a little bit say that. We can grow in love with these people. Um, I've heard later of, of your view talk about how we should not be separating some children and their school fees. That's the goal of the show. So it also we must also touch about talk about forgiveness because sometimes people cannot, like I said earlier, they cannot. It's amazing how people are remembering details. Yes, like the smallest details. Yes, people don't forget. The smallest details people are remembering. And, and, and so we, we need to start going back into the condition of how do we forgive? How do we say that I, this was done to me does not mean that I will never be in this situation again. Like the woman that said, I'm never going to marry anybody that has other children as well. It has happened to me. I must now pay forward by being kind so that I'm changing the narrative going mm -hmm. forward. And then we, all, what, the lessons that we're learning, you've heard different stories from every one of us. Let us begin to share this same story around so that we start changing people's lives and we stop seeing this thing online. Because when I see these things online, the first thing you see is, it happened to me, it happened to me, it happened to me. We rarely hear stories of, this is no, how I dealt with no, it. Good the other story. side of what happened to me as well. But sometimes, well. just like you said, we always label people as wicked. Yes. They are different. We, they, if we hear their own side of the story, you can, you can have a different process. So in, in life, I would never forget this story. This is my own personal story. Uh, my mom... My mom, that, that, that year, that, that day, particular day, my mother picks me up, sends her driver to pick me up from school every time. That day in particular, my daddy had asked her to pick my, my half-sister from school, from, from school, right? I think she totally forgot because it's not her normal routine. That day she just forgot. So the driver picked me up, um, took me home, and that was it. <laughs> then about 5, 6 o'clock, my dad was like, ah, what happened to? My mother said, oh my goodness, she forgot. Then I started running Helter Skelter to see if we can, we can go pick them up mm. in school there. Now, if you ask them about that story today, 
They, they like to say, easy. my stepmother abandoned us in yes. school. Mm. That's the narrative because the truth is that you are, you are abandoned because she was asked to pick you up. Mm. But because she, she, she was in market that day, she was in a pongo trying to do it, she totally even it skipped her mind. Mm. So she told the driver to pick me up. So I was, I won't, I won't that I was safe at home. Mm -hmm. But you see, it depends on the narrative you get. No, but Nima said. So there are different scared. angles. You should always have, have, have that conversation with. This is what no, happened. You would have today. the like, conversation, but we trust me. Not, the mindset, the children. mindset would be like, listen, because as a child, you, all That's you remember it. is that yeah, I was a family. So you want to know the details. Yeah. So apart from that, see, eh, um, this thing is not just the father, mother, or step parents. It's also, you know, you are talking about those naysayers. God help you if you're surrounded by. People who are just hey, aunties and and yes. hey. If this story were to happen and then they were surrounded by aunties and uncles that will help Imagine. them understand. If you go to an auntie and say, Do you know they abandoned me? She's like, No, that's not what they meant to do. Mm. Yeah. If you're surrounded mm. by people who are positive mm. and open your mind to the fact that this was just a mistake, yeah. it will happen. But there are those that will insist that no matter what it is that they are doing for you, mm. oh, she bought you a new dress. It's because she knew you were coming. That's why she bought you this new dress. <laughs> you know, they'll constantly mm. find something. They'll find something. So the to seed me. of discord. Until that child, careful. yeah, and that child will grow up. Seeing, you know, thinking that this person is wicked to yeah, them. It's story, all, it takes the grace of God for some people this to realize it. This story happens in my own house. Let me, my I want to take it. I want to take that story. But let me just go on a quick break. Please take a few more social media comments yeah, about that so story. Crazy. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Thanks for staying with us. I'm told we have a caller. Good morning, Omo. Are you there? Omo, yes, you're good live. Morning. You're live. Go ahead, please. Yeah, yeah good to speak to you, beautiful lady. Um, with your topic today, I didn't want to phone you, but in the end, I said, let me phone you. It brought me in very bad memory. I, I'm, I'm in my 60s now, but my father died when I was very young. And um, my, uh, let me just say that my stepmother was an angel. She was very, very good. I grew up with her. But we had, I had a stepsister who was almost the same age as my mom. And I think there was issues between my mom and her mother. And she took that hatred on us when my father died. And she treated us very, very badly. And I'm talking of to this point that I have resentment towards her own children. Mm -hmm. I don't even want to talk to them. One of them is the London lawyer who contacted me and wanted us to leave. I just didn't want to have anything to do with them. I was the quiet one among the three of us that my mother had, and I was very sensitive. And because I was quiet, I was that everything that happened. Um, she destroyed self-confidence. I had to rebuild my self-confidence to mm. see myself as a human being in my adulthood. Mm. My junior brother's best friend was completely derailed. Um, the only one that survived amongst us at that stage was my elder sister. She lived my Elder brother, who was in England, when he, he came back, and he didn't know he was really good with her. This woman, she will wait, we will table for dinner. She will sit on the table with her two kids. My brother and I will have to go and sit somewhere to eat. We will have to, she was a head school teacher, and we are in the school premises. We will not use the toilet in the house. She will send us to go and use the toilet in the school. So even in the middle of the night, we will have to touch. And this is an area infected with cobra and all those things. We will have to take touch and follow each other to go and use the school toilet. What I want to get out of this thing is that it is when you don't have enough money to look at, look at that people, it's not wickedness. For instance, you could say there's no wrong that. I want to send my child to a good school, and I have this set child, set mother, who I'm looking after, what do I do? That is a practical thing, it's fine. What I'm talking about is serious wickedness, wickedness. and abuse mm. of children who look up to you. Mm. In fact, she was so wicked to me. My father died that my mom was, was thrown out of the house. Our inheritance was taken from us by her. Not mm. they were only two, but the brother was not really interested. And mm. the king had the, my dad was a brother to the king. The king had to call her, say, This is your father's will. And your father has left money, he has left property for you to look after this young one. And that's what you must do. That was the only time she then came and took us from my mom. Even when she took us from my mom, she wanted to deprive us deprive us 
of education, mm. anything good, anything good. You just have to be, in fact, less than a, less than a maid. Even as I'm talking to you, I'm having a lot of things and I'm a bit emotional. Mm. I can tell from your voice. Business from, I don't have enough money mm. to look after somebody. Some people are just wicked. Right. And they have determined that their stepfather or their stepsister, whatever it is, you cannot be as good as we are. Mm -hmm. You must remain beneath us for the rest of your life. That Thank is you. what I experienced. Thank you I very much, Mose, for sharing. Thank you for sharing your story, Mose. I mean, I so that's true. pure wickedness. Yes. That there is nobody <laughs> that's still being that is still doing this. You'd be shocked, Topo. If anybody is still doing this, they should stop it. Mm. The trauma lives after. And you know, the way we said it, when you do good and you seem that you do not reap the good, your children will repeat. When you do bad, and it seems you did not yeah. repeat bad, <laughs> your children would also oh, repeat. Yes. Nobody even, should be doing this. Let me yes. take uh, Higby. Even the Cinderella story, she had that wicked stepmother. Yes. Yes. And she ended up with a prince. Yes. Yes. So, so, so his stepmother and phenomenon good, is... Well, sometimes you, you might just damage... You. See, we're talking... Uh -uh. We're just damage a child yes. in not, so much that their prince will miss them. <laughs> <laughs> Higby says... However, I see the last caller's experience was horrid, not this one, the previous one. However, in life, what people do to you or to people around you that are evil, you as, you as an individual should learn not to behave likewise. Mm. That's where forgiveness comes, comes mm -hmm. in. Just be intentional in loving. Mm -hmm. You see, I wanted to say, talk about this naysayer thing. So once in my family, my daughter and myself had visited the relative and she was kicked out of the family gathering where all the young children were with this elder relative. She came back to me and was hurt by it. She kept saying, you know, why, why, why was I treated that way? I said, no, there's a specifics. I had to find a specifics. And I would say, this is why you were excluded. You know, the number of people there are of a certain age or a certain gender, and you are of a different gender, so that's why. I kept explaining that. In my house today, she remembers that thing so vividly. Mm. She was about three to four. She would still say, hey, remember that? Mm. That thing never happened. I keep trying to wait because I don't want her to grow with that damage. Mm. Because sometimes people don't know how So bad children are very impressionable. Every oh, little thing you do sticks. Forever. Forever. You see, Forever. see all the experiences we are hearing. Mm. These are Collect 30, 20 years. They're mm. clearly recollecting every time. The expression on your face at the time when you said it, the sound of your tone or voice, mm. everything is well interpreted by a child. And they create their own memories out of it. When you are in that, you have to be very deliberate mm. about how you comport yourself, male right. or female. Mm. Have to be deliberate how you comport yourself in front of that child Absolutely. and the kind of fights that you think you want to have with their parents, right. mother or father. Let me take a few comments and we run off. You have to okay, run. Okay, let me just take Desmond Shedrack says, if your child can go against you despite all the love and affection you show him, you should also expect it from others. This life is full of mysteries and con mm -hmm. contingencies. When you're a step-parent with your own child or children, you must ensure that you treat the kids equally. Um, I was raised Daramola says, I was raised by step-siblings and one major lesson I learned is to communicate. Mm -hmm. She was raised with step-siblings. Mm -hmm. With my children as I am single mother, my kids are involved and often make the financial decisions once mm -hmm. I explain the situation to them. If you want change, be the change is my motto. Okay, okay we have to wrap up. I think, I think in a nutshell, what we've learned today is that there are no guarantees in life. Mm -hmm. Wherever you find yourself, do the best you can with mm -hmm. the limited resources you have. Be fair to all your children. Have a conversation. Communicate. Mm -hmm. Talk to each other. Um, but some have also argued that there's some people that are just pure wicked. Mm -hmm. And Tokwe is saying that if they do exist, please, I should hope they don't exist anymore. But <laughs> hey, but the this wickedness, people are, some people will be wicked. But I think at the end of the day, just remember that everything you do, you shall reap. There's that law of karma that whatever goes around will come around. Whatever you do to one person will definitely come back to you. So when you do invest the best you can, no, and you might not get it back from the same source. Mm -hmm. So those children might grow up expect, and still go away. They even expect something in return. But somehow God will compensate you he in a different does. way. He always does. Always. I love the way you cook.